Hello, good day, and welcome to Science eLearning Academy. My name is Malaki. In today's tutorial video, we shall be looking at the concept of scalars and vectors. Concepts of scalars and vectors. What is a scalar quantity? A scalar quantity or a scalar is a quantity that has magnitude only. Magnitude only. Magnitude means size. When I say that a man travels three kilometers, I've just made a mention of the magnitude or the size of the travel. This is scalar quantity. You find out that in this expression, I have not made any reference to the direction. Now, we have examples of scalar or scalar quantities. Example of scalar quantities includes distance, it includes again speed, mass, temperature, etc. These quantities are scalar because they have magnitude only. For instance, you, you, you can't say that uh, uh, my temperature is 30, 37 degrees Celsius, let's say the west or the east, or 30 degrees uh, uh, to the south. So, of course, you now see that it just shows magnitude, let's say 37 degrees Celsius. We don't know anything about the direction. Mass let's say my mass is you can guess of any mass or the mass of an object is let's say 90 kg of course you see that direction is not specified here if i say that an object's distance is increasing with time at this rate three meter per second of course you see that i've not made any reference to the direction so, speed is a scalar quantity, mass is a scalar quantity, temperature is a scalar quantity, distance, as I've explained in this case, is a scalar quantity. When we are uh, describing an object, just describing the size of an object, that is its magnitude, without making any reference to the direction, that quantity is a scalar quantity. So, I've just given example or examples of scalar quantities. Now let us look at vectors or vector quantity. A vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. Vector quantities or vectors, they have both magnitude. That is size, vectors. Vectors, they have magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction how do we describe vectors for instance displacement of an object if i say that a man travels three kilometer do east do east you watch that in this example i have made mention of the magnitude as well as the direction so you see that this has magnitude as well as direction and this is a description of an object's displacement displacement so you now see that displacement is a vector quantity because it has magnitude and direction both magnitude and direction if i say if this is a plane this is y axis this is x axis and i say that an object travels five meter 
just five meter without making reference to the direction so i am talking about the magnitude then when i say it, it travels 30 degrees okay five meter at this angle you see that i am describing the body in magnitude and in what direction so displacement is a vector quantity because it describes an object both in magnitude and in direction there are other examples of vector quantities examples of vector quantities include force they include again velocity acceleration etc so examples of other vector quantities you can talk of velocity talk of acceleration talk of force displacement as we have said etc in this case it describes an object both in magnitude and in direction all right now let us look at vector representation how do we represent vectors vector representation before we continue if you are new to our channel kindly subscribe to our channel to get updated when we post our new videos subscribe to our channel on youtube at science e-learning academy you can email us at science e-learning academy as well and follow our page on facebook at science e-learning academy all right let us continue vector representation how do we represent vectors vector representation you represent vectors by a line with an arrow you represent vectors by a line with an arrow the line shows the magnitude or the size magnitude or the size while the arrow shows the direction the arrow shows the what direction so you represent a vector with a line and arrow the line showing the magnitude and the arrow showing the direction then we can also represent vectors in unit vectors of i j or k which we shall see later in later part of this video so we have seen how we can represent a vector so a line with an arrow now let us talk about vector addition how do we add vectors how do we add vectors if you are if you have two vectors a and b and they are described as this so you have uh, of course you know that a vector is described with a capital letter or a capital letter with an arrow this shows that this is a vector all right so if you have a vector represented as this the vector is in this direction let's say this is a and another one is in this direction say this is b we can add these two vectors vector addition how do we add vectors you add you place the head of one to the tail of the other if this is vector b you place the head of one to the tail of the other this is head and this is what tail of course you see that this is b and this is a a following from the direction so we can have a third vector which gives the resultant the effective value both in magnitude and direction so the resultant c now is a plus b addition of vectors addition of two vectors now we can talk of subtraction of vectors you now see that this is b if i write if i change the direction of the arrow 
we see that this will be what negative b the addition of uh, subtraction of vectors follows from the addition of vectors so if i now have that this is minus b minus b so uh, how do i represent uh, how do i represent um, the subtraction of vectors to represent this vector we add we place the head of one to the tail of the other look at this the head of one to the tail of the other this is a of course this gives the resultant we see that the resultant c is just a plus minus b and this is a minus b so this is the subtraction of two vectors it follows from the what addition of vectors all right so how do we uh, find the resultant of vectors so before we look at the multiplication of vectors uh, let us look at um, resultant of vectors resultant of two vectors resultant of two vectors we shall treat multiplication of vectors in i j k units unit vectors of i j k so now let us look at resultant of two vectors resultant of two vectors is just trying to find the effective that single value of a vector that represents uh, if you talk of two vectors now that represents two vectors both in magnitude and direction so uh, just as we have seen in adding a and b to give a plus b that is c adding a and b so this is the resultant so let us look at resultant of vectors properly all right if you have two vectors moving in the same direction you add the vectors if we define a vector p if this is x axis and define another vector q you now see that these two vectors since they are moving in the same direction you do what you you add but when they are moving in opposite direction you subtract given that vector p is 30 newton and vector q is 40 newton 40 newton we can we can find the resultant of these two vectors how do we find the resultant of the two vectors let us denote it as r resultant the effective value of uh, the two vectors in this case force because this is newton so when two vectors are heading in the same direction along this it could be along y axis this is just on x axis so when they are in the same direction you do what add so you have vector p plus q and this is 30 plus 40 this is a 70 newton 70 newton all right of course you see how uh, the the units are written 30 newton this is what 30 newton all right so these are two vectors moving or uh, that are represented in the same direction what happens when they are in opposite direction as i've said when two vectors are in opposite direction you subtract the two vectors when the vectors are in opposite direction you subtract for instance if you have two vectors represented as this is p this is p and you have another this is x axis and you have another on um, moving in this direction you have another moving in this direction remember we are saying in opposite direction now so moving in this direction let's say q we can find it this is x axis 
we can find the resultant of these two vectors r since they are moving in opposite direction we subtract p minus q so given that let's say this is 40 newton and this is 30 newton so you can choose any um value for the force but for convenience let us choose 40 and 30. so to find the resultant of these two vectors you subtract because they are in opposite direction so you have 40 minus 30 and this is 10 newton so this is how to find the resultant of two vectors when they are moving in opposite direction but what happens when uh, two vectors are inclined at an angle when two vectors are inclined at an angle we can use parallelogram law of vector parallelogram law of vector which follows from sine rule so when you have two vectors inclined at an angle theta let's say this is p and this is q we can use parallelogram law of vector then if two vectors are inclined at angle 90 degrees 90 degrees let's say this is angle 90 degrees let's say this is the first vector this is the first vector first vector and this is the second one so when these two are inclined at angle 90 degrees we can find the resultant of these two vectors using the Pythagoras theorem. Using the Pythagoras theorem, of course, you know that this is P. So this resultant is here, and it is inclined at angle 90. To so find the resultant R, we follow from the Pythagoras rule that the hypotenuse square equals the sum of the squares of the two other sides. So that we have that R now is uh, square root of p this is square root of p square plus q square so when you have two vectors inclined at angle 90 degrees you can find the resultant using parallelogram law of vector but what what happens when we have two vectors inclined at an angle other than 90 degrees what do we do when it is inclined at an angle other than 90 degrees we use the cosine relation uh we use the parallelogram law of vector which follows from the cosine relation and i will just write that you use this to resolve it that r square equals in this case p and q you have p square plus q square plus 2p q cos theta i won't go into driving how this is gotten what is gotten from the cosine rule that if you have um, this if this is a triangle okay that has angles angles of course you know that you can take this out from here let's say this is a this is b this is c and the side facing a is small a side facing b is small b side facing c is small c so to find this uh, this side here Facing this angle, we say that a square equals b square plus c square minus 2bc cos theta. And to find b or c, that is the size, you follow from this again. So it is from this that this is driven. So you can have uh, the parallelogram law or theorem stated in this uh, manner again. It can be stated that r square equals p square plus uh, q square minus 2pq then you have a uh, uh, cos theta or you can have that r square equals p square plus q square plus 2pq cos 180 minus theta all this follows from the cosine rule and to make it uh, convenient for us let us take this first one so what do we now do from here so if you are given two vectors inclined at an angle theta 
we can find the resultant using this. That is the effective value. Resultant of two vectors is just an effective value, just like when you add two vectors, the what it gives is the resultant. So the effective value, both a magnitude and a direction, gives the resultant of the vectors. And what is parallelogram law states? It states that uh, the resultant of two vectors is given as this. By is given by the adjacent sides of the parallelogram. Adjacent sides of the parallelogram. Then the resultant now is gotten from the intersection between these two points. Okay. So you have the resultant here. If this is a parallelogram. This is a parallelogram. Okay, this is the resultant. If two vectors are represented both in magnitude and direction by the adjacent sides of the parallelogram, that it, the diagonal, the diagonal drawn from this point of intersection gives the resultant of these two vectors. That is the effective value of these two vectors, both in magnitude and in direction. So if you are giving two vectors, let's say incline at angle 45 degrees let's see if this is 45 degrees to find the resultant you see r square if this vector is let's say 30 newton and this is 40 newton if this is 30 newton and this is 40 newton we have it as 30 square plus 40 square plus 2 times 30 times 40 uh this is 40 cause cost of the angle the angle in between the two so you use it direct if you are using this formula you don't need to do any further um analysis just use the angle direct this is cause 45 degrees but if the angle inclined is let's say 135 you can use the other uh, formula that I have given before now. So to find the resultant is just to find the square root of this. 30 square plus 40 square plus 2 times 30 times 40 plus 45 degrees. And what is this? So what will be the value? So if you find the resultant, you see 30 square will be 900 plus 40 square will be 1600 plus 2 times 30 times 40 plus 45. 2 times 30 is uh, 2 multiplied by 30 multiplied by 40 is 2400. And if you do perform 2400 plus 45, you get this. So you now have that the resultant of these two vectors will be 64.78 Newton. So this is how to find the resultant of two vectors inclined at an angle other than 90 degrees. So I have said that when the two vectors are inclined at angle 90 degrees, you use the Pythagoras theorem or rule. But if it is inclined at an angle other than 90 degrees, you use the parallelogram law. But let's even see if uh, this formula is correct. For the two vectors inclined at angle 90 degrees, uh, how did we come that the Pythagoras theory can be used to resolve it? So you see that this is to these two vectors, let's say P and Q, both are inclined at angle 90. So what I have uh, when I come here, I put 90. R square equals P square plus Q square plus 2pq plus 90 and plus 90 is 0 so this goes away so you are left at r square equals p square plus q square which is a description of the pythagoras what theorem so when you have two vectors inclined at angle 90 degrees you use the uh, the pythagoras theory to find the what the resultant now how can we find the resultant someone will ask how can we now find the resultant of more than two vectors because you have seen how to find the resultant of two vectors when they are on a straight line moving in the same direction or opposite direction 
But we also found how to find the resultant of two vectors when they are inclined at an angle 90 degrees. And we have also found how to find the resultant of two vectors when they are inclined at an angle other than 90 degrees, let's say 45 degrees, using the parallelogram law of vectors, which follows from the cosine relation. So how do we find the resultant of more than two vectors? If you have a vector inclined, this is y, this is x. We have a vector represented this way. This is f1. This is uh, f2. And let's say this is f3. How can we find the resultant? To find the resultant, we talk of um, resolution of vectors. Resolution of vectors into components. So we look at resolution of vectors into components. The idea of resolving vectors into components will help us or enable us to find the resultant of more than two vectors with ease. So when you have a vector, you have a vector represented in this manner. You have it as, this is, uh, I don't mind the drawing. So you have it as, have it as this okay so we have it as this again let's use uh, force as the vector let's call this f y because it's along the y axis and let's call this f x remember this is inclined at angle 90 degrees so when we have two vectors in this manner remember this vector can be anything it can be acceleration a y okay or a x it can be velocity v y or v x so but i'm using uh, f here force in this case to represent the vector when i have an angle here let's say theta and of course you see that the the magnitude of this vector the resultant will be here, F. That is the effective value of this force. Of course, you now see that here should equal here by, by definition. Here should equal there. So here should equal here. So you now see that this will be F, Y again. So that the resultant F from Pythagoras rule, remember is inclined at angle 90. From this uh, construction, you see that this is 90. These two vectors, they are inclined at angle what? 90. So you have fx square plus fy square. So that f will be fx plus fy square square. But what we are looking at now is not finding the resultant, but resolving this force into components we want to find the effective value of this magnitude f the resultant f the effective value or uh, along the x-axis the horizontal axis and its value along the y-axis that is just about resolving vectors into components following from the sokatoa 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 this shows that sine of an angle equals the opposite of the angle upon the adjacent. This is cosine of an angle shows that this is the adjacent upon the hypotenuse. And this is the sine of an angle opposite of an adjacent. So looking at this, this vector now, and looking at this angle, you see that this is the one opposite of this angle. So it becomes the opposite. The side facing angle 90 degrees is the hypotenuse, and the other one is the adjacent. So see, opposites of a hypotenuse. Opposites uh, of a what? Opposites of a hypotenuse. So opposites of a hypotenuse is what? So katoa. This is so katoa. So so katoa is written as this. A sign of an angle is opposite of a hypotenuse cos of an angle is adjacent upon hypotenuse and sine of an angle is opposite of adjacent so we shall be making use of this 
to resolve these forces, these vectors into components. Let's look at this. This is adjacent upon hypotenuse. Adjacent upon hypotenuse cos. So we say that cos theta is adjacent upon hypotenuse. So that fx will be f cos theta. So we have resolved this force f to f into uh, the horizontal component. So the effective value of this force now along the x direction is f cos theta. That is very good. So now let's all look at this. This will go at opposite of a hypotenuse sine. So sine theta is opposite fy over, let me write this very well. Sine theta will go at opposite, which is fy, hypotenuse, which is f. Cross multiplying, we have that fy is f sine theta. So we have given two uh, vectors. This is forces now. Have fx and fy. We have resolved it in y, is y component and x component. That is the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. Given the resultant and the angle inclined. So this is just about resolution of vectors into component. We shall use this resolution of vectors into components to find the resultant of more than two vectors. To find the resultant of more than two vectors. So in our video, we shall be looking at finding the resultant in uh, the video which I will do after this. I shall be finding, giving an example and I will use from the example to find the resultant of more than two vectors. If you have enjoyed this uh, tutorial, this lesson, do well to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get uh, updates, to get updated when we post our new videos. My name is Malaki Nemeka Sowa. Thank you for watching. Good morning.